In today's news, opposition withdraws from joint press conference. A premier saddened by lack of support by opposition. Premier links governor's power request to Foy's trial. Additional powers to be temporary if granted, assures governor. A launch into inquiry, allegations against COP, that is Commissioner of Police. Of yours, these and more stories when 284 News return. Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. 284 Media proudly presents The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman with yours truly, Ron Grant, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Don't worry, it's not all about suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 5. A tweet for media production. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. Wait, really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I've been watching football, Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome, viewers, to the Tuesday, January 9th, 2024 edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. Leading today's news, a show of unity between the Virgin Islands government and His Majesty's loyal opposition against Governor John Rankin's recent request collapsed after the opposition withdrew from a planned joint press conference on Monday. According to Premier Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley, an informal emergency House of Assembly meeting was held on January 5th, which saw elected members agree that Premier Wheatley and Opposition Leader Honorable Ronnie Skelton would together denounce Rankin's request. For the following day, however, Skelton publicly stated that he pulled out of the joint press conference, saying that the opposition would hold its own conference instead on Tuesday but the opposition cited not wanting to be drowned out by the unfinished COI reforms as justification for separating itself from the cancelled joint press conference. While elected members appear to remain united against the governor's call for authority expansion, the fragmented response risk muddling the message. What the withdrawal foregoes uh, were showing of cross-party solidarity to defend the BVI from Rankin's purported power grab. Rupi Marie Lee still proceeded to denounce the move on Monday, but without the opposition present. Now moving on, viewers, we're following the opposition's decision, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley shared that he was saddened with the leader of the opposition and its members' inability to come together at a crucial time. He was at the time responding to a question by 284 Media's Ron Grant on the lack of unity between all 13 members. And as he spoke, I almost got emotional at the city. <laughs> because not only am I perturbed, but it saddens me. You know, I'm genuinely sad about it um, because obviously I'm someone who I have a great deal of, of respect for those persons in the past who would have stood up and they fought for our rights. The Theodore Faulkners, the Glani Fonsecas, the Carlton De Castros, the H.R. Pens, the Noah Lloyds, the Laverty Stouts, the Willard Wheatleys. And it just makes me sad to feel that we've, we've gotten to a place where we can't come together and defend the sacrifices that they made for us. 
and I just you know, I, obviously the opposition will be able to to speak and say what they need to say but I'm still hopeful Ron that even though I do feel it would have made a powerful statement for them to be present I'm still hopeful that we can come together, all 13 members of the House of Assembly, regardless of, of party affiliation, and that we can send a statement that we are all united in the face of this threat. I, I don't take it for granted that there are perhaps some persons who would be saying or would be whispering, if you play your cards right, you know, this can help you in some way or maybe you can form a government. You know, those type of uh, thinking or philosophy will be exactly what will get our democracy taken away from us. Because um, divided, we will be conquered. You know, the, 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 the strategy of divide and conquer is real. And it has led to um, many nations around the world being colonized and remaining in a colonial situation. And unity is strength. Unity is strength. And we can have whatever arguments we have with each, with, with each other as uh, politicians, but we should all stand united as it pertains to defending the country. Additionally, Wheatley was asked on whether he felt a sense of responsibility for the lack of success regarding the COI implementations. Uh, thank you for that question, Ron. And the reality is for me, success for me means a better life for the people of the Virgin Islands. And really that's what I signed up for. Some people will say success or failure has to do with a particular date. You know, I don't look at it that way, Ron. Failure for us would not be able to grasp every opportunity we have to make the life of the people of the Virgin Islands better. And we have to work hard every day to make it happen. And what we didn't get, what we didn't get accomplished yesterday, we have to accomplish today. And we do have to have a sense of urgency. And in some instances where there are things which slow the process, which we do have bureaucratic practices in government that slow the process, and it is a shared responsibility, especially on the top levels, and the governor does not escape that responsibility. As the one who's responsible for public officers, as where, where uh, human resources falls and the role he plays as it pertains to, uh, as well as myself, the attorney general and, and the ministry of, uh, of finance or dealing with the public officers there, all the different components of government. We have to be laser focused how we can make government work better for the people. Well, moving on viewers, we're leader of government business and minister of finance, Dr. the Honorable Natalia Wheatley has stated that he strongly believes the governor's request for more powers to implement the commission of income reforms in the territory was meant to come as a surprise to the territory and to deliberately coincide with a trial of former Premier Andrew Foy. Just days before the governor's press conference, we had a tripartite meeting. This is a meeting with all the permanent secretaries, financial secretaries, all the ministers, the deputy governor, the attorney general, um, the cabinet secretary, and the governor. And during that meeting, there was no mention for this request of additional powers. There was no mention of an extension of, of a November deadline. And Kathy, I can't help but think that this is something that was planned to surprise us. And I, I can't help but think, Kathy, that this was something that is, was supposed to coincide with the trial of Andrew Foy. Uh, just like when the report, the COY report was dropped on us with the whole idea of suspending our con constitution, that coincided with the arrest of Andrew Foy. And I've been studying this type of behavior for a long time, Kathy. These things are well planned. And I would be saddened to know that the governor saw this as an opportunity. 
the trial of Andrew Foy is an opportunity to reintroduce this whole idea of taking away our democracy from a different angle than the interim administration. Of yours, the Premier's response came following questions from the media on if at any point before Friday's January 6, 2024 announcement, was there a conversation with the Governor as it relates to a further extension with a November 2024 deadline? What the COI report recommendations which re recommended a uh, UK takeover of the Virgin Islands was initially withheld from the public, but Governor Rankin saw it fit to release it the day after Foy was arrested in Miami on April 28th, 2022. But after the Virgin Islands, people demonstrated against a UK takeover and was supported by entities such as the United Nations, CARICOM, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the University of the West Indies, and regional leaders. The UK held off on the decision, but decided to institute an order in council in reserve to pressure the VI to implement the COI recommendations. What up next? Additional powers to be temporary if granted, assures Governor, and Governor launches inquiry into allegations against the Commissioner of Police. What is and more stories after a word from our sponsors. At Higher BVI, we're not just about business, we're about empowering lives. And that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Higher BVI, where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. One Stop Auto, located in the r and Malone Complex, Parkwood Pond, is having a huge liquidation sale on all inventory, excluding vehicles and genuine Toyota and Lexus parts. Get no less than 50% off all items on shelves and inventory room. Items such as car covers, steering wheel covers, wipers, sea lamps, chemicals, emergency cones, adhesives, license plates, frames, air filters, oil filters, front brakes, rear brakes, front rotors, rear rotors, radiators, shocks, and much, much more more. A specific listing of all makes and models for which parts are available at liquidation prices will be posted on our Facebook page. Welcome back viewers. His Excellency Governor John Rankin has assured residents that his requested additional powers will be specific to the implementation of the Commission of Inquiry recommendations and the temporary enactment if approved. But Governor Rankin provided further clarity on the details relating to his request that was sent to the United Kingdom government. While admitting that the decision was solely left to the United Kingdom government, Rankin sought to outline at least three of the additional powers that might be considered, which include giving the governor the authority to introduce legislation inside the House of Assembly. First, an additional power for the governor to himself introduce legislation to the House of Assembly in circumstances where the government itself is, is unable or unwilling uh, to put forward legislation uh, to the House. So that legislation could come to the House of Assembly for everybody to see and for still to be subject to the democratic debate and scrutiny in the House of Assembly. But that would give the Governor power to, to go over the logjam and get the legislation straight into the uh, House of Assembly. Governor Rankin also spoke about having more power within the public service. A second area uh, could be where there's clearly you know, delay taking place within a department. Contrary to what some people sometimes like to say, uh, the governor doesn't have total charge of the public service. The governor is in charge of the terms and conditions of the public service, but the power of direction and control rests with ministers. So you could envisage in a situation where there's a particular failure to implement that the governor could be given powers to intervene and help more directly in the work of, of a department. Another critical area mentioned by Governor Rankin is increased power in the procurement process of issuing government contracts. 
At the moment, as governor, I can uh, see in advance um, contracts proposed for over one hundred thousand dollars, but the decisions on them are, are made by cabinet, in which the governor uh, doesn't have a vote. Um, I can if necessary, ask the Auditor General to look at such contracts. But I wonder, for example, again in line with uh, better scrutiny, whether there might be a power or right of the Governor to uh, refer those contracts to the Public Accounts Committee in the House of Assembly so the Public Accounts Committee could be made aware of the contracts and debate and consider them. So there's a sort of additional powers which I think might be uh, of assistance. The outgoing governor said that in issuing a governor of an overseas territory such constitutional powers is not new to the British overseas territories as he referenced an example in the Cayman Islands. In, in Cayman, uh, the uh, governor has the power to legislate himself in areas, to introduce legislation in areas which fall into the governor's responsibility, not a power which I have in the BVI. So precedents like that, they could be looked at to see where additional powers might be appropriate. So those are the sort of areas which I believe should be considered and which I believe could help to move forward the COI uh, recommendations to implementation. Well, in related news, Governor John Rankin has revealed the initiation of an independent review into allegations surrounding Police Commissioner Mark Collins. But this comes on the heels of mounting concerns within the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force regarding Collins' conduct, with dozens of officers raising their voices through a petition for his removal. The petition signed by a substantial number of RVIPF officers outlines a staggering 55 allegations against Commissioner Collins. But these range from accusations of meddling in the course of justice to the abuse of authority and violations of rights. The governor emphasized his commitment to addressing all complaints seriously, assuring the public that the findings and recommendations of the inquiry would be made public. In fact, I have, in line with UK and international best practice, asked uh, a senior police officer from a, another overseas territory within the region uh, to carry out an independent review of the complaints have been made and looked into and uh, once that uh, review has been completed and any findings or recommendations have been made then I will make them available uh, to to the public uh, but uh, I need to wait the outcome of that but of course I take all complaints seriously and so I've taken action in that matter as I have in other matters. In response to queries about potential biases affecting his decision making, Rankin firmly rejected such insinuations. Well, first of all, I think I've just illustrated to you there was not bias on my part in this area. Uh, I've uh, ordered a review of the complaints and uh, complaints be looked into in this matter, as having other matters. So, uh, I, with respect, I reject the uh, accusation of any bias. Uh, secondly, uh, I'm not aware of anything which suggests that the majority of officers in the RVIPF do not have confidence in the Commissioner. I've seen the petition, uh, which has been uh, signed by uh, a number of officers. Uh, uh, some of the complaints uh, in that petition are of a different nature from others, uh, but uh, they will be looked into. And uh, I do not believe uh, that there are grounds for not having confidence in the Commissioner of Police, but I await the outcome of the review and I shall receive it without fear or favour. Rankin, who was further pressed on the challenges facing security in the Virgin Islands, also took some time to reflect on the current state of the BVI's national security, for which he holds responsibility. You're quite right that uh, there are issues important for this territory beyond uh, the Commission of Inquiry. And I've always said that uh, my responsibilities for security and for policing are my number one priority. So what have I done in that area during my time here? Well, the answer is secured some uh, $2 million worth of UK funding for better training uh, and equipment and facilities for the police. Plus, with the support of the Premier's Minister for Finance, uh, additional officers in the RVI PF. I provided for um, additional ribs uh, for uh, maritime uh, surveillance by the police. Uh, 
And under my watch, under the watch of Commissioner Mark Collins, we have made record uh, captures of guns, guns which kill people, and of illicit drugs. But I share the concern over the number of murders in this territory and any life lost is one life too many. So I need to continue that work with the police for which I take responsibility. But I've also made clear that we need the whole community to help in this area. We need a civil society, we need churches, uh, we need parents, we need families to work with us in this area. Uh, and as you know, the, the Premier has proposed a work on an anti-violence strategy, which I hope can take place some point in the first quarter uh, of this year. Well, up next, who will pay for COI lawsuits? Governor responds, keys to new Joss Van Dyke school handed over by RDA and BVI Airports Authority advances airport development. But these stories, the to it for news return. Today, I am doing cobble treatments with Beyond the Reef. Today, we are doing shark research. So today, we are doing whale research with Beyond the Reef. And wherever I go, I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited. Everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What do you mean? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Rashford made it. Manchester United have come from behind to lead. At home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live, select your package, and tune in. Welcome back, viewers, and thank you so much for sticking with us. Governor John Rankin has once again sought to defend the Commission of Inquiry, stating that none of the charges for misconduct or misuse of public funds were frivolous. But this was in response to a question posed by 284 Media on whether the United Kingdom government would pay for damages if persons who have been charged in relation to the COI are later proven to be innocent and sought legal action for the tarnishing of their reputation. In response, the governor shared the following. A matter in which there could be differing views, but uh, charges are only brought after a uh, careful investigation by the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force and then by the independent decision of the Director of Public uh, Prosecution. So I would not myself uh, describe the uh, charges as, uh, as frivolous in that fashion. Secondly, it is of course open to individuals to try to seek uh, civil remedy 
in those circumstances. I wouldn't like to speculate on, on what the answer would be to your uh, uh, p precise uh, question. The norm would be for compensation to be played locally, but if, for example, it was felt that it was a, a signal failure or on behalf, or as a specific consequence of the Commission of Inquiry, then no doubt there could be a debate around the issues that you, you, you set out. But uh, I, I don't expect that will arise, but if it does, it will need to be looked at at the time. You don't expect, but... In the effort that it does, civil lawsuits are expected based on the nature. After defending the COI charges, Governor Rankin then addressed whether the UK would pay the damages if persons are found innocent and opt to sue the British government for the charges incurred. Who is precisely responsible if something has gone wrong? So I think we need to examine all of those points before we could answer that specific question. You mentioned about frivolous, and good governance has been the central theme for the COI report. Well, moving on, viewers, the Recovery and Development Agency has announced the handover of keys to the new Joss Van Dyke Multipurpose Educational Facility to the school's principal ahead of the upcoming term. The new school provides a safe, inclusive learning environment for students on Joss Van Dyke. Its impact extends beyond classrooms, bringing positive change to the entire community. According to the RDA, excitement is high among students, teachers, and parents. The key is now in the principal's hands, ushering a new era of the island's students, and an official ceremony marking its completion will take place in the coming weeks. But RDA has also announced that the foundation work is now underway at the site of the Eslin Henley Reaches Learning Center project. According to the RDA, footings have been cast and backfill will be completed soon on the Learning Center's foundation. Well, each step forward in constructing or construction brings the vision of the new Learning Center closer to becoming a reality as the facility will provide critical educational resources, support and programs for the Virgin Islands youth. While still in the early stages, the ongoing foundation work is a clear sign of forward momentum and the RDA has promised that it will continue providing updates as tangible progress is made on the Learning Center project. Well, moving on to our final story, viewers, where the government of the Virgin Islands has announced that significant progress is being made in the air ongoing airport development project. Aron Grant has more on this report. To this end, the BVI Ports Authority has opened tenders for the development of a business case which is crucial to the project's success following a recently concluded RFP process. The tendering process attracted interest from both local and international firms and saw a total of eight bids being received and publicly opened on January 4th. Minister for Communications and Works, the Honorable Kai Reimer, expressed his satisfaction with the level of enthusiasm and interest displayed by potential partners, underscoring the government's unwavering commitment to the airport's development. He said, and I quote, we see this as a significant step in realizing our vision for the expansion of the Terence B. Letzum International Airport and the territory on a whole. The overwhelming responses from reputable firms, both locally and internationally, affirms the importance and potential of this project. The next phase of the project involves a thorough evaluation of the tenders received, with the aim of entering into a contractual agreement with the successful bidder in the coming weeks. Chairman of the Board of Directors, Mr. Theodore Burke, emphasized the authority's dedication to keep the airport development project at the forefront of priorities until it is realized. He said, and I quote, it is our intention to maintain momentum on the airport development project until its fruition. The public opening for tenders today marks a significant leap towards the forward in this process as we move closer to solidifying the next steps in the airport's development. Officer in charge, Mr. Elvis Harrigan, represented the managing director at the ceremony and shared his optimism about the future of the project. Harrigan said, and I quote, Today is a great day, not only for the authority, but for the entire Virgin Islands as we advance rapidly with the airport development project. We are determined to make this vision a reality, and this marks a crucial step in that journey. The evaluation process is expected to be completed in the coming weeks, after which the successful bidder will be awarded a contract. The government of the Virgin Islands and Authority expresses gratitude for the widespread interest and commitment demonstrated by all stakeholders involved in the pivotal undertaking. Well, viewers, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Goodbye.
Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my city life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I hot. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you.